Hi. Asperato's managed app puts Salesforce in control of payment collections. Any end-to-end -end process, regardless of business requirement or industry, can be set up, modelled, delivered and managed from within Salesforce. We are different to other solutions on the App Exchange. Why? Well, Asperato integrates at the object level, not at an API level, so that the process of implementation and maintenance is code free, the experience is consistent across all payment gateways, and does not require any specialist knowledge of the individual APIs, and as a result, is far less error prone. As our customers don't have to deal with code or build their own payment capture screens, security and compliance are easily delivered. Asperato offers the only fully audited, multi-gateway, end-to-end, PCI DSS Level 1 solution on the App Exchange, meaning even Salesforce's largest enterprise customers can trust us with their payments. Asperato's approach of object-level payment handling enables the Salesforce platform to control the end-to-end -end payment process, making a digital-first approach and a full automation of payments a complete reality. The converse to Asperato's approach is that if your solution uses API integration rather than object level, then you'll not be able to easily manage the end-to-end -end process from Salesforce in a compliant manner without significant technical skill, time and budget. Asperato is a trusted Salesforce ISV and a graduate from the EMEA Salesforce Accelerate program in 2019. Asperato have over 270 customers collecting payments in over 15 countries via card, direct debit, ACH and PayPal. Notably, Asperato is the preferred global payment partner for Financial Force. The flow template that we have built allows Salesforce customers to easily collect and store a saved payment method, be it a tokenized credit card or a direct debit mandate. These saved payment methods are referred to as authorizations, and once established, they can be used to collect payments without further customer interaction. This approach of collecting and storing payment methods is used by many businesses that collect monies either as payments for subscription services or variable monthly payments for things like rent, phone tariffs or insurance premiums. Let's take a look at the flow template set up and see how it is structured and how it's implemented. We can see on the flow setup page we have the Asperato accounts to authorization flow available to us. Now that's launched from a quick action on the account object. But before we go and give a demo of that, I'm just going to jump into Flow Builder here so we can see some of the internals of how this flow is functioning. So the first thing we do is look up to see if we have any contact records available to us on the account object. Now if we do, then we can decide whether to use one of those contacts that already exist, or we can create a new one. If we don't, then we just need to create a new one. So that's this decision here. After we've either created a new contact or picked an existing one, depending on what the user decides, we look up that contact and then we do the same thing, but for authorization records against that contact. So we say, have we got any authorizations against this contact record? Now, if we do, we give the option to the user to say, Yep, I want to use this existing authorization records and I want to reprocess that. I want to re update that. In that way, they can update their saved payment method. If not, then they always need to create a new authorization, a new saved payment method. And that's what this block here is doing. After we've either created a new authorization or chosen to use an existing one, we look that up and then we say to the user, do you want to process this authorization now within Salesforce? Do you want to enter those details as you are? Or do you want to retrieve a link so that you can send that via instant message, via email, however you want to, 
to the user so that they can process that authorization, that save payment method at a later date. And that's this decision here. And depending on the outcome of that, we'll either process the authorization now or we'll display that URL so they can process it later. So now we've looked at the internals of the flow, we'll just look at a quick demo. So we have a demo account here. If I jump in here, I can see that I already have a contact set up on this account. I can click the setup authorization button and that will launch our flow. Now, as we said, this flow has decided that because we've got existing contacts set up, we can either use one of those existing ones or create a new one. I'm going to use the existing one for the purposes of this demo. And it displays the list. Which one do we want to use? That's Jackson Pollock there. Now, again, we can say we can see here that we have existing authorization set up for Jackson Pollock. Do we want to create a new one or use an existing one? Now, in this case, I'm going to say we want to create a new authorization. And here we say I want him to be able to authorize either via card or via e-check. The options you select here will be the options that are given to the user on the payment page for the methods that they can use for this authorization. And the final step here before uh, the payment screen, again we see do we want to process this now or display the link. Now for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to say we want to process this authorization now. So here's our payment page. It has the details pre-filled in based on those specified on the contact record in Salesforce. So here I'm just going to enter some test card details. And we're going to update the authorization. It's worth noting here, as the options for the options we selected, I could also use e-check and enter e-check details for an e-check authorization. But for this case, I'm going to use card details. So at this point, we've gone off, communicated with the card gateway and obtained a saved payment method for that given card. So I can finish this and we have confirmation that we've set up a new authorization for Jackson Pollock. So we're now again back to the account record page in Salesforce. And I'm going to now click on Jackson Pollock's account to open that. Now here we can see that we have two authorizations set up for Jackson Pollock. And this last one here is the one that we've just set up now. So if I go to this authorization object, you can see that we have his details here. Now I can actually take an immediate payment using this saved payment method. So let's take a hundred dollar payment straight off of this saved payment method. If I now refresh this page, we can see that we have this payment here, which has just been created for the amount of $100. If I load this payment record, we can see that that's been collected from the customer. We have the reference here for our payment service provider from our card gateway. And it's been collected against this saved payment method, which we've set up just now through this lightning flow. Next time you think of tackling payments on the Salesforce platform, think of Aspirato. Better still, head to the App Exchange and take your first test payment within minutes. Thank you.